Hi, everybody, and welcome. Today, I have a special guest, uh, Jess Condi. She is a friend I met five years ago in Bali. Some of the fun ways she expresses herself in the world is as a coach, as a yacht chef, uh, and as a world traveler. Welcome, Jess. Oh, thank you. It's so lovely to be here with you. I know. I'm so excited. So we just reconnected after several years. Uh, met five years ago on an adventure in Bali, and now we're taking our adventure virtual. So thank you for agreeing to have this conversation around change, around transition, and how we do it. Go ahead, Jess. I think, no, I was just to say, I think these conversations are just so important at this time. Yeah, it feels like the world is changing so fast and a lot of it out of our control. And so this idea of us learning this skill seems paramount. Have you been seeing this as well with your clients? Absolutely. I think people are just needing these conversations more and more. I think people feel very disconnected and lost more than ever. And I think that having these conversations and being really authentic in what you're going through is important, like sharing your vulnerability and sharing the hardships that you are kind of enduring at the time. It's just like we're all going through our challenges. And I think to kind of, keep posting on the highlight reel of life, people get really um, disheartened just seeing the highlight reel of what everyone is doing as opposed to the truth of what's really going on behind closed doors. So I think having these conversations and shining a light on what's really going on is a great invitation for others to know that they're not alone. Mm. Well, I think it's a skill that we're going to need to learn as a world because for a very long time, posting the highlight reel of our lives, which of course you've got a lot of because you're traveling to all these amazing destinations on yachts, but you know, it's a beautiful balance and it's part of what I liked from the beginning of meeting you, which it feels like a counterbalance. Like those things aren't wrong or bad, they're amazing. And wouldn't it be great to also have the counterbalance weight of being able to be real and authentic? And doesn't that make your life more full, right? Absolutely. So, you know, this whole idea of transition, change, uh, a new calendar year, a new season, a new job, home, relationship, whatever it is, uh, it seems to be that one of the primal reactions people have is either I'm never dating anybody like that again, or we got to get out of here and they want something completely different. Or what about setting a new year's resolution so that I can lose 15 pounds and I'm going to change my hair, upgrade my look. There's, it's all, all of these experiences are almost in reaction to what's happened and sometimes like uh, the rubber band effect, like when the rubber band's been pulled too far and then it snaps back, it feels a little bit like that. And so, you know, rather than, I wanted to, us to come up with a new way, a new way to share with people who are thinking about like, hey, I don't want a new year's resolution again. Another way to beat myself up because, you know, by the end of the first month of me doing it, it's, I failed, right? What's, what's another way that I think we can, you know, talk about how to more gently and kindly navigate through change? Uh, one of the ways I thought is, um, what if we, our only job in each of these experiences that we're having is to take the lessons from it and become a more truer version of ourselves? And I think that is so beautiful. And I think it's so important right now, because I think for so long, as human beings, we have had the disease to please. We have really tried to be everything for everyone else. And I think we've put a lot of our own dreams, wishes, hopes on the back burner. And instead of doing what's really true for us, we've done what's true for our mothers, our brothers, our sisters, our husbands, our wives, whatever it is. And I think we've neglected what's truly within us. And I think to the invitation to step more fully into who we are and to nurture those parts of ourselves is a beautiful way to start off this next year and to just like step into that which is true for us and to honor that and to every day do things that are more in alignment with who we are where we're going what we want to create and the vision we have for our lives moving forward mm, i love that so let's let's talk beauty how about if we talk a little bit of beauty um when i think of beauty and i think of you i think of an expanded perspective of that 
I've seen a beautiful plate of octopus dressed with purple, what was it? Like purple cauliflower. Purple cauliflower. <laughs> oh my gosh. So when I see the way that you present food in the physical world, you don't just want to make sure it's delicious. You want to make sure it's beautiful, right? It's, it's uh, appealing not only to the taste buds, but also to the, you know, sight and vision, all senses. So when I think of beauty, I think of it uh, in many realms. I also think of it in physical beauty. So we were just talking about how oftentimes people set a goal to lose weight or change how they look. That's also an aspect of beauty. Uh, and I, I used to have resistance to talking about beauty because I thought it was superficial and, you know, I need to be focusing on, you know, my education and my thought and, and paying attention to what I received accolades for growing up is really important. But I now understand that beauty is all of these things and more. It's the smile on a little child's face, the giggling, the pitter patter of their feet. There's so many ways uh, that I find beauty in the world now. And I think that has only happened because in the past few years, uh, I actually had a had got a parasite on my travels and became sick. And as I navigated that, I had to my literally my hair started shrinking. It was pretty much like probably about six inches longer than this started shrinking and I had always blown it out. It always was, you know, full and uh, had great volume. And suddenly I, I was losing hair and it was shrinking. And so one of the ways that I realized in the past year or two that I have navigated becoming a more truer version of myself was that when my hair got this short, it was actually shorter than this. Now it's uh, on the mend. But I basically needed to have curly hair for it to be voluminous enough to balance out my face. And so not only did I uh, pull out an old picture of myself uh, to remind yeah, myself wait. that this is becoming a truer version of me because I don't remember another picture after I was about seven or eight years old, maybe 10, that my hair was ever curly. And so becoming a more true version of myself was me making peace with that younger version of me. Mm. You have anything around, you know, the physicality of the world that feels, feels like you've become a truer version of yourself. Absolutely. I think, especially as women, we have an innate kind of desire and an innate, um, it's just within us to create beauty. Um, I think, and that's for me, what really comes out in my food and in everything I do, I try and create beauty in the world that I exist in. It's just, I love things that are aesthetically pleasing and I love, I'm a Torian as well. So I have that, I love to create a sense, sensory experience as well as a um, aesthetics of everything for me. I have to be, I love the aesthetics of everything. And I think what's so important, but it comes from the inside. And I think when we start to make peace with who we are on the inside, then we create beauty in all aspects of our life. But it's an inner, it's an inner job first. So it's yeah. like, as you said, you've made, as you've gone on this journey of healing. And I think that's where it really stems from. As we go on these journeys of healing ourselves within, we heal ourselves on the outside too. It's like what we have on the inside, we have on the outside. And as we start to see more beauty within us, we start to be able to see more beauty around us because the world is abundant and beautiful. When you look at nature, it's just like so full of, you look at a flower, it's just like this natural phenomenon. Look at the ocean. I mean, we can be mesmerized by the ocean for hours. And, um, but we don't, sometimes we just, we're so busy in our own life or so busy in judgment or comparison that we, we miss out on all this natural beauty that is around us. So I think like for me, the invitation to all women is, create something beautiful in your life every single day and enjoy it, see it, feel it, taste it, smell it, have those moments of pure joy and pure beauty just for you and just because. Wow. Well, you know, Jess, as I'm looking at you and I see your beautiful curls, because now I'm back to the curls, um, <laughs> something just came to me as you said, 
look around you and see um, really about, really what you're saying is look at the differences and the contrasts and rather than judging them, see the beauty in those differences. Mm -hmm. And what I would tell you is now I know why these curls uh, were such a problem for me. They were a problem for me because nobody else in my family had curly hair. So when we look around us to be for a sense of belonging, to be accepted, mm -hmm. what society puts on the covers of magazines and makes quote beautiful. That was something I was so deeply influenced by that what I saw is the discrepancy between that and me. And that became ugly. That became not right. And I had people around me telling me, you know, my sibling telling me that this isn't right. You, something's wrong with you. You don't belong in our family. Look, you don't look like the rest of us. As siblings do, right? We're young mm -hmm. and, and children have that talent of pointing out anything they see that's different or they don't like or they don't know. Um, and so what's interesting is as I look at you, I see beauty in curls. And so isn't it really interesting that I could judge me very differently than I see you? Same, yeah. same experience, right? But it doesn't have all of that weight attached to it. So what about you and curls? Did you, uh, have you ever battled with them or have you always, is that something you've had peace with? I mean, my hair can be wild. I can look like a crazy wild lioness when I get out the ocean. I, when I let that, my hair dry, I look like a bit of a scarecrow. And sometimes I, I do have it, but I've learned a bit of a big head don't care and I just embrace it. Um, there definitely have been times in my life where I haven't loved my hair. I think women, as women, we're so judgmental on ourselves. We, we really are our harshest critic and it's quite sad. And I think like that's like what, we, what we're talking about here is like, really learning to love ourselves more, accept ourselves more and become more of who we really are. So for me being my, this wild child, this wild woman, I'm embracing all of the wild at the moment and I love it. So tell me what the, uh, did you say wild hair don't care? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love coming up with a, a, a phrase, a mantra, something that when, when that voice creeps in, can be a way mm -hmm. to remind you of how you want to feel and when you feel free, free of Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I making it fun, making it fun. I think the whole thing here is also why have we been taking ourselves so seriously for so long? It's like we've got to bring in that childlike sense of joy, that play, like have some fun with it. It's like just like let it go a little bit, you know? <laughs> and <laughs> how? Really, if we think about it, how crazy would the world be and how boring would it be if we all looked the same? It would be awful. It would be, it Completely. just wouldn't be interesting. So I think <laughs> that is a really important piece here, which is bring to light uh, something in your life on a physical level. Let's just start there. Mm -hmm. On a physical level that maybe you've been rejecting consciously, subconsciously, something you've noticed, something you're continually trying to adjust or change. And ask yourself, where did it come from? Where did this start? When's the earliest that I remember feeling or thinking this way? Whose voice do I remember hearing telling me something wasn't okay? Or when did I notice that I didn't feel like I belonged? What picture did I see that someone told me was more beautiful, right? So in that space, what is one belief you have about yourself that you've outgrown and that you can now embrace, whether it's, you know, wild hair, don't care, what, whether it's curls and finding a little picture of me that helps me be a little more myself, What's one way that you can start to embrace who you are and become a truer version of who you are in this next chapter? I think for me, I've always kind of been the black sheep of the family. I've always been on this wild adventure that was very true for me. If 
but I still felt like I had to explain myself to people. I would come home and I would be like, I would try and explain, I would try and fit back in the box, so to speak. And it just would take me back into this triggered space. And it really was not serving me in any way, shape or form. But um, what do they say? Do you think you're spiritual? Spend a week with your family. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> And yes. I think we've all felt and, like and that over a festive period. Yeah, and listen, listen to what they say with a new lens, a new level of hearing, an expanded perspective, not to make them bad or wrong, but to learn yeah. where these voices came from. Completely. And I, and I think it will help people become clearer. So thank you all for tuning in. Uh, we are so glad that you joined us. And whatever transition you're in, whatever next chapter uh, that change has brought, whether it's a calendar year or a circumstance in life, the question really becomes, how are you going to meet it? What would you like to do to become a more truer version of yourself? And if you're struggling with that, where did those voices come from? And are you ready to let them go? Thank you, Jess. Thank you for your wisdom, for your thoughts, uh, and for your sharing of you. Thank you for having me. It's wonderful to be here. <laughs>